checking in now with Chris Wyman, who's joining us, I believe, from an airport. Chris, are you there? Hey, what's up, Ariel? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for the time, Chris. Um, I know you're kind of tight for My time. Pleasure. So uh, so let's get into it. Uh, this is the first time that you know you've you've talked to anyone publicly since UFC 194. If you can just give us an update physically, how are you feeling? Because you know that that was a tough one to watch. It seemed like you took a lot of damage. The fight may have you know went on a little longer. How are you physically right now? Uh, physically, I'm good. You know, um, during the fight, it, you know, I, I was uh, you know obviously my face was beat up. Other than that, just uh, some other little little dings and that I had to take care of, um, but face was good. Luckily, I didn't get too concussed, um, so it didn't, didn't mess me up. I didn't get uh, too messed up, but I'm good. Have you watched the fight since it happened, and if so, do you feel like it went on too long? Uh, no. I mean, uh, you know, I never went out. I wasn't, um, I, w- I was almost, uh, you know, I was still fighting back, so I don't think, it, I don't think they should have stopped it. Um, I think Herb Dean did a good job. I understand where people are coming from. I would have been upset if they did stop it earlier. Um, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have been complaining. But I'm also not complaining that they kept it going. Okay, so it, it's great to hear. Almost uh, exactly 30 days uh, later, almost a month later, that physically you're feeling yeah. fine. Uh, emotionally, though, I mean, losing the title in that fashion. How how are you dealing with the loss? You know, less than a month later. Uh, you know, at first. You know, I've had some amazing wins in my career, and uh, and the moments were always were always surreal. Every time, every victory. Um, you know, you imagine winning so many times, and then when it finally happens, it's just a surreal feeling. And uh, the way I felt after the loss was uh, by far the most surreal feeling I ever felt. It just it felt like a bad dream that I just wanted to, uh, you know, go back to sleep and and uh, and you know just. Make, make it not happen again. You know, it just, it's felt like a bad dream. So uh, it, it's definitely been a surreal thing, but emotionally and mentally now I, I feel like I'm in a way better place than I've ever been. Um, I'm more excited about the future, more motivated than I've ever been. Um, you know, being champ for a while and being undefeated and having some of the biggest fights early on in my championship career against the Genesis Silva, Michida, MV2 on Luke is a big fight. But, um, it wasn't like the biggest fight of my career. The motivation, motivation was there for me to train hard and stuff like that. But when I, was, I felt like I was kind of going through the motions uh, through camp, and it just felt like a, you know, just another fight. I, you know, I got to win. And uh, the, the true excitement while I'm walking to the cage, and you know, while we're touching gloves, it just, it just wasn't there. It wasn't the biggest fight of my career. You know, it, uh, you know, when you, when you, when you compare it to some of the other fights I've had, um, but it should have been. You know, but the, it's, it was just a, a great experience for me. Uh, you know, I could play back a million things in that fight I could have done differently, but I'm really happy I lost. Wow. Um, I feel like if I would have won that fight, if I would have somehow figured a way to beat him up, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be, have the opportunity that I have now to grow and uh, grow as a fighter and truly reach my potential, which I've, now I feel like I've, I have the freedom to change things. That I've wanted to change it for years, uh, but, you know, you don't want to fix things that aren't broken. Right. So it kind of stops you from making changes. But now I feel more free than I've ever felt to change the things and do things that I wanted to do and uh, with, without feeling any, like, you know, I'm, I'm cursing myself. So I feel great. I'm real excited about the future. I feel like this just uh, is, is going to create a, a whole different monster uh, inside of me. And I'm excited to go out there and fight again. So, uh, so yeah. What in particular are you looking forward to changing now? You know, there's there's a lot of things, uh, little things. You know, there's my nucleus will always stay the same. Matt Sarah, Ray Longo, those those are my that's that's my that's my family. So it's not like I'm changing my camp or anything like that. Or my coaches, but there's little things uh, to be determined. I don't want to go into anything right now, but just I just don't want anybody speculating like I'm leaving the camp. By the way, I'm talking or anything like that. It's okay. Far from that, those those guys are my family, and I know how people will will take my words and try to you know, spin them in a different direction. So those guys in my family, that they'll always be my nucleus. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, abandoning anybody. But um, I just, it just allows me to change myself in ways that I wanted to change myself for a long time. So I just feel, I feel, I feel great. 
it, it felt to me like uh, you won the first round, you lost the second round, you were winning the third round until you threw that kick, and that was sort of the beginning of the end. Can you, again, since this is the first time that you're talking about it, why did you throw that kick, and do you regret doing that? Um, no, I don't. Have, I don't regret doing that because I'm, I'm happy. I, I'm happy I lost. And, right. You know, everybody could talk about the kick, and it, it, you know, I, I do feel like I was winning the fight. But I was, I was running on like two cylinders, and and I, I feel like I deserved to lose that fight, and I'm and I'm happy I did. So wow. Uh, if I, you know, I just felt like he was circling that way, and I just felt to go for a spinning back kick. He he capitalized on it. He took me down, and then hang on, what's it? What? Okay. He capitalized it, took me down, but that doesn't mean it should be the end of the fight for me. Right. You know, it's it's not the spin and back kick that I'm really critical on myself about. You know, it was a pretty was it a pretty spin and back kick that did, did it change the momentum of the fight? Uh, you know, definitely. But there's things that I should have been doing that I didn't do as soon as I hit the ground. And there's reasons on why I didn't. And there's and there's things that I'm excited about to change to to do things differently. So I feel like uh, everything happens for a reason and. I feel like there's a big plan for me, and this, this is part of the plan. It's almost... And, go ahead, sorry. That's it. Uh, it. I was going to say, it's almost a little bit shocking to to hear you say that you deserve to lose. How long did it take for you to feel that way, to, to go from the heartbreak? Because it, you know, it, was, it was also somewhat shocking just to see you in tears walking out of the cage. Um, there was a lot riding on this fight, but to hear you actually have this positive spin on it and say, I deserve to lose, and you're happy that you lost and all that. When did you come to that revelation? You know, it, it's one of those things. Uh, I, I felt weird. I mean, the camp, the the camp, the, the lack of excitement, and, and I'm not making any excuses. I trained hard, but lack of excitement um, about it. Um, I just couldn't trick myself into being ex- extremely excited about it for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, so I just, I don't know. Hey, what was the question again? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm walking to the airport. No, no, it's okay. Uh, the question was, how long did it take for you after the fight to say, you know what, this oh. is a blessing. This is good. I deserve this. I'm happy. This yeah, is gonna... so it was... yeah, I'm sorry about that. No problem. Yeah, no, it, was, it was like a, a slow thing. So you kind of feel like these things that are a little off during camp, and then you walk into the cage, you feel a little off, and then you lose. It was surreal. It was, it was just weird, you know, losing. Um, but then, and then shortly after... You know, you realize, you know what, this is this is part of the plan. This is what was meant to happen. Uh, he was a better man that night. And there's a million things in my mind that I know uh, could have gone differently and I could have done differently and during camp and in the fight. Um, but at the end, I have no regrets. Like, I really don't because now, okay. now I have the ability to come back even better. And if I would have won that fight, I just, I don't think my improvement uh, from fight to fight would have would have been there. I think I would have stuck with the same things. You know, the if it's not broken, don't fix it. So right. you know, being undefeated and and you know for that long time, you just don't feel the need to change things. But now I have that the gift to be able to just be free and um, and whatever 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 I feel I need to do, I could do without any uh, without second guessing myself. I recall in the uh, countdown show you said that. You still got time? Okay, I'll meet you on the plane. Okay. How much? Hang on. How much longer? Okay, I got like <laughs> I guess I got shorter time than I thought. I got like three minutes to guess until no problem. So they're gonna kick me off the flight. I, I okay, I got two questions for you. Okay, um, first, yes. what was I, you spoke on the countdown show about? You know, you got your kids. Your son loves you being champion. What was it like when you had to tell them you weren't champion? Yes, this, that was. That was the hardest part of, of everything, man. There's nothing like, you know, you've seen my son and my family so involved in my life, and you've seen him on the countdown shows, and my, especially my son. He's just so vocal. He knows daddy's a champion. He's so proud of me. Uh, he knows I'm fighting Luke Rockhold. He thinks I'm the, you know, he wants me to throw him down and beat him up, and he wants me to be the champion again. He, can't, he knows daddy doesn't lose. I was undefeated forever, and he just knew that I don't lose. And so for, for me to have to tell them myself, because I... I no one else told them. They, you know, they fell asleep. Right. Uh, you know, Vegas time is late, so they fell asleep and uh, uh, for the fight. So no one, I made sure no one told them that I lost. And that morning, you know, they came to my my room and I had to tell them the news. And especially for my son, it was very hard for me. Uh, I get emotional just thinking of it now. 
it was, it was very hard. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a month, it's a month ago now. He still, he still just, he still loves me. I'm still his hero. You know, he's still a Tizmi champion. He knows that he's going to have a, a good next fight. He knows he wants, he wants me to beat up Luke Rockhold uh, next time. Uh, he wants me to get him back. <laughs> um, but it's good. It was, it was a good learning experience even for him, uh, for him to learn for his life. Yeah. You know, that's not, that sometimes you do lose, but that's not what defines you. It's about what you do afterwards and how you get back up again. And I'm, I'm back up better than ever. And I can't wait to show everybody who I truly am. Okay. And the last question, perhaps the most important one of them all, what's the plan here? Because it feels like, at least to me, that, that next fight for Rockhold still very much up in the air. I mean, he's talking about Vitor and Romero's kind of getting pushed off to the side. Your name has been brought up by him, of all people. What, what's next for you? Do you have any idea? And what do you want? That's, yeah, that's, that's the fight I want. You want an immediate that's rematch? I, want. I think that's the fight I deserve. Uh, and that would be the biggest fight of my life. That, that, tr- that trumps my Anderson Silva fights. That trumps my Leo Machida, my Vitor fights. It trumps everything. That's the biggest fight of my life. I'm going to be a completely different animal, uh, motivated more than ever. And um, I'm going to go repay him. A little bit of what he did to me, with no, no personal vendetta, no, no emotion, but just competitively, just go out there, and uh, just, just completely demolish him. Have you told this to the UFC? Uh, Are they on board with this? Yeah. Well, um, yeah. So the next day, Lorenzo's, you know, such a great guy. He came to my room and we hung out and he spent time with me, watched football, we just talked, talked life. And, um, oh, I let him know right there and then that, you know, that wasn't me in that cage that night. And anybody who knows me, anybody who's seen me train, whoever, anybody who's trained with me, anybody who's pretty much seen any of my fights, they know something was off. And they're right. With no excuses, he was the better man that night. But um, I'm going to be a completely different person when, he, when, he, when I step in there with him next time. So do you think you're getting it next? Is that, is that what's next for you? That's, that's, that's all I'm focused on. Wow. Right now, right now, I'm training already, um, and I'm just so hungry and determined, and the only face I see is Luke Rockhold. Okay. Let's leave it at that. You have a plane to catch, yeah. right? Yes, I do. I okay. might have actually left me. No, no, no. Okay. I'll let you go. Thank you, Chris. Tremendous stuff, and we'll talk to you soon. All the best to you. I don't want to be uh, responsible right. for that. All right. Take care. Uh, hang on. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. There he is, Chris Weinman, about to catch a plane, but I think he said it all. Um, so amazing. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I sent Chris, you know, no secret. Contrary to what Michael Bisping may tell you, I'm not biased. I'd like to think that I call it like I see it. That being said, there are certain guys, like a Chris, like a Connor, where maybe it felt like, you know, from... And that's just foresight. That's just me saying, I think this guy's going to be champion. Hanging your hat on a certain prediction, um, uh, a, a statement or, or, or two, and... Uh, You know, he became champion, and he had a great run, and it was fun to be a part of that. I sent him a text after he lost and just said, you know, I didn't ask for an interview. There's a certain, you know, there's, there's, we're human beings as well. Of course, you want the first interview. Of course, you want to talk to him first, but you got to respect space, and especially after you come off of something like that. So I didn't ask for it. I didn't reach out to him, didn't speak to him on the phone, um, essentially up until this point. So I wasn't really sure what to expect out of him. And because you remember that shot of him walking out of the cage crying. He was, you know, thoroughly beaten down. It's great to hear that physically he is okay. But I really wasn't sure, you know, some guys need six months to come back. Some people don't talk. I mean, it was on a much smaller scale. The world wasn't, you know, watching that particular fight and to a degree rooting against him. But, you know, we we still haven't actually heard from Ronda Rousey. Again, much smaller scale. The paparazzi isn't going after Chris Weidman right now, but still, some people need time before they speak to the, the media and you hear their voice, you see them, and I understand that. He said he wanted to come on and he wanted to come on now. Maybe now's the time to, to campaign for that fight, whatever, but I wasn't sure what we would hear. Excuses, I wasn't right, this and that. I mean, you got to give him, as far as handling a loss of that magnitude, that might be one of the better, that might be one of the better interviews from a loser that I've heard a month out. I deserved it. I'm happy. Very few, uh, very few complaints, very few excuses focused on what's next. I mean, kudos to him there for that. 
So it's going to be interesting because it feels like for whatever reason, Romero isn't getting that fight, at least right now. I mean, Luke was trying to do anything he could to, to, to not take in. And, you know, I understand where he's coming from because Romero is the biggest name, doesn't speak English, it's going to be hard. It's all on Luke. Wanted the Vitor fight. I have a hard time seeing that happen right now, especially after the Anderson fight fell through. So I don't know if they're too keen on doing that right away. Could it be Chris Myron? That, that'll be very interesting. You know, UFC, uh, not shy about making immediate rematches, especially as of late. It's going to be interesting. But I got to say, blown away by what Chris Wyman just said there and, and how he dealt with the loss. Very impressive.